Welcome to the Mentoring the Mentor program. This program is designed to help those who mentor students new to opticianry. The mentoring program consists of a series of videos. The videos are an online resource available to anyone interested in mentoring a future optician. In addition to an introduction to mentoring, modules are found in one of four main content areas, ophthalmic dispensing, ophthalmic laboratory, contact lenses, or optical sales. In this introductory video, we'll provide an overview of the history of mentoring, the mentoring process, applications, and keys to successful mentoring. Mentoring has a rich and interesting history. The term mentor had its origins in the Odyssey by Homer. Telemachus, son of Odysseus, goes to fight in the Trojan War. Athena, the goddess of wisdom, assumes the form of mentor to guide and look after Telemachus. So what is a mentor? A mentor has been defined as a trusted friend, counselor, or teacher, usually a more experienced person. Some professions have mentoring programs in which newcomers are paired with more experienced people in order to obtain good examples and advice as they advance. Optician mentors often have high levels of optical experience and technical skills, but unfortunately, little training in mentoring. Early mentors were the master craftsmen who taught young apprentices to become journeyman opticians and eventually master opticians. The apprenticeship programs were developed by the guilds in the 1600s in Europe. So you might ask, who needs mentoring today? New opticians learning on the job? Participating in a formal apprenticeship program? Or attending a degree program? All need guided, hands-on experience in the workplace. This is an essential component of the learning process. The mentor does not need to be able to teach the theory behind the process, but they must be able to observe, guide, evaluate, and provide constructive feedback. The mentoring process involves guided practice between a mentor or coach and a less experienced learner. The five key elements in the mentoring process are modeling, coaching or scaffolding, reflection, articulation, and exploration. Let's look at each of those five elements. Modeling may be demonstrating a competency for the mentee or thinking aloud to share the process. For example, when helping the mentee adjust a metal frame, they can demonstrate or talk aloud while performing the adjustment so the mentee understands each step. This could be done on a coworker or on a customer who gives permission. Coaching or scaffolding involves providing the mentee with verbal support of the cognitive activities needed to perform a competency. For example, using the same competency, the mentor would now allow the mentee to perform the adjustment while checking each step. If necessary, the mentor will correct the adjustment while providing a verbal description of the correction. Reflection is where the mentor encourages the mentee to review their performance on a competency. The mentee should think about what worked and what did not work. They should also consider what they need to do next to improve their performance. For example, the mentee should be asked to reflect on the adjustment they just performed. Following reflection, the mentor needs to encourage the mentee to communicate their findings. As the mentee articulates their perception of their performance and a competency, the mentor can agree or provide additional suggestions. For example, in this case, the mentee should talk about why the adjustment was difficult for them to perform. Was it their lack of experience in selecting and using the proper tools? Was it because they did not follow the proper sequence in performing the adjustment steps? Was it due to the patient's unusual features? The mentor will help the mentee identify the areas they need to work on. Exploration gives the mentee room to solve problems on their own. The mentor slowly withdraws some of their coaching and scaffolding support and allows the mentee to perform the competency on their own. This is the point at which the mentee begins to build their problem-solving skills. Mentors must adapt to the mentee, the environment, and the competency in being mentored. Some mentees will require more attention to the mentoring elements for competencies outside their comfort zone. They may be quiet, shy, or lack confidence in their ability to perform. The keys to successful mentoring are trust, self-motivation, flexibility, communication skills, and technological skills. The mentoring process itself consists of four phases. 
The first is initiation, or beginning the relationship. Next comes the cultivation, the nurturing of the relationship to create mutual respect and trust. Then we move to separation, or reducing the coaching and scaffolding activities while increasing the mentee's opportunity to explore. And finally, redefinition. This may be the end of the mentoring process or a move to higher level competencies. The four cornerstones of an effective mentoring program are forming relationships. You need to care about the mentee as a person. Effective communication. This means clear, objective, and supportive communication. Professional development. The process should allow both the mentor and the mentee to learn new skills. And finally, fostering a balanced life. Encourage the mentee to engage in professional, civic, and recreational activities beyond the workplace. There is more to life than opticianry. Establishing an effective mentoring program starts with the recruitment and training of potential mentors. Prior to recruiting, the institution should define the role and function of the mentor. The mentor should be committed to helping the mentee beyond any financial incentive that they might receive. It takes a mutual effort for a mentoring relationship to work. An environment of mutual respect, trust, and comfort takes time to establish and both parties must be committed to the relationship. Frequent and regular interaction is needed to make the mentoring successful. However, some mentees may have an unrealistic expectation of 24-7 access to the mentor. Busy mentors may become frustrated with frequent demands on their time. Expectations should be clear regarding communication methods, turnaround time, and frequency of interaction. Mentoring does require effective communication between the mentee and the mentor. The mentee may be working at a different location or at a different time, but still seek the mentor's advice. With the expansion of computers and multimedia, virtual mentoring is possible through several vehicles. Mentees can benefit from an asynchronous feedback through email. Synchronous communication can supplement the asynchronous through products like Skype. Without frequent communication, the social aspects of the mentoring relationship may be lost. To summarize, the keys to successful mentoring include a clear definition of the mentor's role, understanding of the desired outcomes when performing a competency, Appropriate application of modeling, coaching, scaffolding, reflection, articulation, and exploration. Frequent and regular interaction between the mentor and mentee. And mutual respect, trust, and comfort. Each video in this program will describe a competency and provide guidance on the assessment and evaluation. The goal is not to teach the competency, but to provide guidance and benchmarks of acceptable performance. We hope you enjoy the program.